The Old Guard is a Netflix feature film based on the comic book of the same name. It was due for release in July 2020 and so was affected by the COVID lockdown during post-production, forcing VFX houses to scrabble to change work and communication methods in order to deliver a total of 835 shots on time. Milk VFX worked on the dockyard, the kill room and the church fight scenes, and the Camp Leatherneck established shot and set extensions. Camp Leatherneck was shot on a private airfield in White Waltham, England. The art department built an extensive set bringing in tons of sand to cover the ground. Six 20 by 40 foot, that's six 20 by 40, six meters by 12 meters, blue screens attached to telehandlers were used as a portable backdrop which could then be easily moved to any part of the set as they were needed. The flashback showing Andy's immortal companion being placed in an Iron Maiden and dropped into the sea was just some people filmed in front of a blue screen. Milk created a 2.5D map painting of the whole village and the harbour. For the fight scenes, prop weapons were digitally extended and wires were painted out in addition to blood splatter and dismemberment work. Due to their work on Logan, Image Engine was brought in to work on the Immortals' regeneration. Working with a concept artist, they researched medical websites and built up a database of different wounds and their stages of healing, including a time-lapse of a finger wound healing over six weeks. All this was used as a reference for creating the customizable procedural wound healing system in Houdini. Healing stages were identified from the initial wound to scabbing to new skin growth and residual bruising and then the entire process had to be compressed into a few seconds. The team was concentrating on realism and it didn't matter how gruesome it was, it just had to look real. During production, wound placements were planned and makeup artists added residual blood around the planned area. This residual blood was used as a marker for the VFX team in post. Squibs were used on set so the actors had something to react to and the VFX team also used them as a reference for additional blood hits. For the stomach regeneration scene, a three-stage prosthetic was used, the interior of which was kept green. This gave them the placement, size and scale of the wound and helped the actor with the interaction and performance. Mr X's work included the creation of CG plates and plane extensions and all the scenes to do with Merrick's penthouse, including the fight scenes landing up to it. Merritt's penthouse was the biggest CG environment in the film and was located in London, England. They weren't allowed to shoot inside the building, so only the exterior scenes were shot.
They took a LiDAR at street level and another on the roof. This one would give them the views from the windows in the interior of Merrick's penthouse. They also shot 360 degree time-lapse high resolution stills to capture the times of day. For the interior shots, the team went to a house in Wentworth, England, that had 270 degrees of floor to ceiling windows. Extensive green screens were set up which unfortunately turned the house into a green box and everything inside was reflective, meaning that the Mr. X team had a huge amount of crew reflections to paint out and green spill to deal with. The final jump scene that was composed of the LiDAR taken of the exterior in London, the falling shot captured by having a camera on a Libra head and being dropped from a descender rig, the plate photography of the interior in Wentworth, the photography shot in a back lot in Shepperton where the actors hung from wires in front of blue screens with a wind machine and the camera doing the work, and CG buildings, this was all stitched together by the Mr. X team to create a continuous shot. Please give us a like if you enjoyed this video, don't forget the links to the music are in the video description and be sure to let us know in the comments section as always which movie VFX you'd like to see behind next.